All right, so let's start. This <laughs> is a lizard person. Okay, so the person who submitted this uh, through Facebook, um, they, they thank you for giving me a description that goes with it. Basically, actually, let me just read you the description. Um, he is a king who lost his son to a war. Uh, with an enemy nation and because of that he refuses to negotiate peace terms and is determined to wipe out the other nation That is big and uh, I'm trying to figure out did he was he this ruthless in the war? Was he always ruthless and that he was so ruthless enough to have lost his son and even uh, with, Which works as a catalyst to for his ruthlessness and his cruelty to push the war even further So he's a stubborn ass um, he's an ox, as you've as you've uh, illustrated here. He's a very stubborn ox. So <clears throat> when we think about an ox, really the best way to design a character, which you really are comparing to an ox, is to just take a look at uh, an ox. Take a look at how they look. Try to pull from their actual character. This is something I do uh, when I'm trying to describe some something as being uh, extremely stubborn or or. or mean looking like this is a perfect example look at how mean this ox's face is uh, i would totally pull, pull from this so deep set brows maybe maybe a large bushy brow um kind of eyes that don't really uh have a beauty to them but also have like an age to them uh, no expression halfway of the face down so really empty of expression really void of any kind of emotion expressed it's just a stubborn ass who has the ideal in his mind and he only pursues the ideal when we have this kind of character design and we're thinking about this character and then I look back at yours uh, we I, I don't feel any of that I don't feel like I'm looking at a what the fuck I don't feel like I'm looking at a stubborn ass sorry one pixel what the heck crop tool take it easy um, so, whoops. So the best thing to do in this case is to not do that, Mr. Brack. All right, I should have unlocked it before cropping it. All right. <clears throat> so the best thing to do is to go over the expressions as they're happening first. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Take care of the fact that we have established that this guy is a stubborn ass who is willing to, to fight for the ideal kingdom, the ideal vision of his kingdom, uh, enough that he lost his son, or he did it for so long he lost his son, which made him even more stubborn. He's, he's either in mourning or he's a really, really stubborn ass. So which, how do we bring those together? He looks a little feeble to me at this. Like if we compare it, like he looks a little weak to me, considering all those battle scars. Let's find another character uh, that they had battle scars on, a kind of weathered character. He's in uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2. The way they designed him is really good. <coughs> uh, Dragon Master, I think he's called or something. It was the Jimon Hansu character. Um, bad guy. I don't know what his name is, but uh, really, really, really similar. And I'm kind of thinking you should have pulled from this kind of character. Yours looks a little sad. Well, this guy's eyebrows really, really, like, it's sort of one with his eyes. He's, like, always frowning. Even when he's smiling, it's like a frown. He's never really, he never really has that distance between the eye and the brow that makes something like the smolder happen. Smolder, tangled. <clears throat> like, that's the only time someone starts looking human. But when you get rid of... <laughs> When you get rid of this space here and you only have this, you're taking away a lot of the human. And look, lo and behold, it's the skeleton, the skull from our villain days when we were studying villains. Um, so uh, it's really important that when you are designing a character and you have a backstory and you have a powerful narrative describing how extensively brutal this guy can, can, can be, his background, uh, his, his history has led him to having a scarred face. His entire, his entire silhouette is just one big daunting silhouette. It's empowering, large. His eyebrows wouldn't be so distant from his eyes. So this is a distance. I call this a distance. I think there would be a natural frown in his face that we would always see. So let's start there. And if you're not really familiar how to really bring in eyebrows in your work, then uh, I, I've made a video on uh, expressions that you could take a look at. A lot is in the eyebrows. A lot happens with the eyebrows. I'm going to shadow off his face. So he's kind of a villain. I feel like he's a villain. I feel like he's, if he was the protagonist, he's be, he'd be the protagonist that learns his lesson at the end and finally becomes the good guy. I feel like he's the Beowulf kind of character that doesn't learn his lesson until it's too late. <clears throat> so, 
I'm just going to shadow down his eyes again, working from these multiple references that we picked up. This character, and I think they did base him off Jimon Hansu's face. I'm not sure if I'm saying that name right. But let's start with these changes here. It is a character design, so the portrait only has so much. You only have so much space to really make the portrait pop, so we do need some major, major contrast changes here. I might even just fix the contrast. So it's a little tricky because it's low res. No, this is all wrong. No, maybe. Actually, maybe I'll do this and then I'll desaturate. Okay. Well, I did want the background much lighter. It was a little too dark. But I think this, once I zoom out, will read a little better. Now considering, so we take care. We took care of that made him a little more angry looking. So before he was like, oh, my son, my poor son. And then now he's like, those fuckers. Um, so a little, I, actually I'd give him even more of a scowl, something asymmetrical to take away further from the beauty. This guy's face was a very asymmetrical. Always had that scowl, that asymmetrical mouth. It's just This is used everywhere. These are tropes used everywhere. So just memorize them, remember them. Write them in a, in a notebook somewhere. Okay, if drawing a bad guy, what kind of a history? If he's lost his son, please refer to page two, protagonist turned bad guy. <laughs> like, make it make a, it's like a network of, of facts that you'll always use when designing a character. I know, I know Pixar and Disney and Universal Studios and whoever have these kinds of lists for their character design artists um, that they use, that they pull from. Because it's, it's, such, a, it's such a specific uh, amount of props you can use to make that read happen through a moving uh, character over a, like a motion picture. It has to read instantly. It has to look scary from all angles. That's typically what you want to do. A beautiful person has to look beautiful from all angles. So I'm giving him a bit of symmetry. Sometimes, you know, the nose breaks when a massive blade cuts straight through it. That's what I loved about the, the way they designed uh, Tyrion in the book. So his nose isn't just cut through, his nose is gone. Like it, half part of his nose is just cut off. I like that realism, like brutality of war. So before he's like a little bored looking, and now he really looks angry. Like he's not someone who you just have a passing conversation with. He's always planning the next move, the next attack. <clears throat> Some more stuff to to push that uh, villainous kind of brutality, but also keep him a little bit closer to the protagonist. I'm not really sure if he was a villain. Um, or, or a protagonist, really. I'm just making assumptions. And I'm going to cast some longer shadows. I'm zoomed out, as you can see, which is really important to zoom out. If you're zoomed out, you can make better choices with how dark you're going, how long the cast shadows are. All of that stuff applies. Never take shortcuts. Always try to give your cast shadows a, a chance. Sometimes we avoid the cast shadow. We're like, okay, I'm not going to work on cast shadows, but I am going to throw in some n nice little detail on the hairs. That, that's not going to carry the feeling from this distance, from this level of distance away from the face. I'm, I'm going to talk about the silhouette in a second. I totally just skipped back to the face. Um, but uh, from this distance, <clears throat> all that reads are the major highlights. So I'm going to get that yellow based. Always use a pale yellow color for the highlights, please. It'll make everything more realistic. And I'm just going to throw the brightest part. I'm going to build it radially. So building it up and I'm just going to throw that highlight everywhere. See that? Oh man. And the navigator. You just, just look at the navigator. Keep your eyes on the navigator. You'll see what you need to see over there. All right. Zoom out. It's starting to read, right? Really nice contrast. Purple in the shadows that I picked up off the rest of the face giving his face a bit of a shine where that scar happens. I'm going to throw even more highlight. I'm going to get the sharpen tool to hurry up. <clears throat> Wherever the light touches, I keep on having almost make a Simba joke whenever I say that, but whenever the, wherever the light touches, everything gets more contrast. Wherever it does not touch, less contrast. So right over here, less contrast, less contrast. Uh, don't worry if we can't see his eyes. We're all so used to over glamorizing eyes that we, um, you know, we realize everything else comes before it. The geometry of the face is what has made this read. Nothing else. No, no, no amount of detail or sparkles that I put in the eyes made this read from this distance level. He looks very angry. I'm going to make him look even more angry. I'm still not satisfied. I still don't feel like this is the face of a man who lost his son 
probably a son that was, you know, just a learning, learning to be a warrior, probably, maybe even if he was young and he hadn't really, you know, become a warrior, he still lost him. If he was like a young adult son, he was just turning 16, just come of age and he lost him to a battle he doesn't know how to end. Come on, this guy needs more frowns. This guy thinks a lot about the past. His eyes are always distant, but very, very angry. <clears throat> now I'm going to cry for him. <laughs> so... It's a beautiful way to build characters. Start with the story and make sure all the choices made react to that story. Navigator is always on the side of the canvas. Okay. Cast maybe cast some shadows of the hairs along his face, just like this. Sorry, I'm not looking at the comments. I will in a second when I ask you guys some questions. Let me cast some shadows there. Cast some shadows there. Throw this off into some shadow. I feel like this little design here is a little bit too girly for him. I feel like a simple line, a belt of gold. I don't think he spends much time looking in the mirror. Sometimes kings like to dress them up dress themselves up to be uh, you know all decorated but sometimes a king likes to just hate the world and what happens is that he chooses something that's bold I kind of respect this design for a king um, just like a completely distant separated brooding constantly planning um, war tactics and whatever he really doesn't have time to stay decorated he probably likes being in the battlefield with everybody else kind of like a Darius type character but a little bit more capable of emotion um, Darius from League of Legends and uh, a lot more uh, with, a, with a darker sadder past than, a, than an angry past <clears throat> so I'm gonna get the dodge tool run one last time over that nose which is very very big very big nose so uh, there should be a little bit more involvement in the light between the nose on the nose sorry so just desaturating areas dodge tool likes to oversaturate now I got that read for that character design from the distance really important you get that read get the right amount of contrast and shade the face as if it is a geometric landscape write that back to me guys shade the face as if it is a geometric landscape gonna lighten up the sides of the nose. The sides of the nose shouldn't be as dark as the crevices. They're only sides. They're not cavities so you don't share value words. Everyone loves to over over highlight the side of the nose. I don't know why. What's the glamour in it? I don't know. Over overshadow the sides of the nose. Sorry. You guys need to lift those, those values up all the way. And then just here where the nose is starting to kind of edge out. That's where we throw some more. <clears throat> we can throw some secondary lights down here under the eyelids. I don't hate Darius, just people who play Darius. Yes, I don't hate Timo. I do hate Timo, and I hate people who play Timo. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Shade the face as if it is a geometric landscape. Thank you. All right, so that read is there. Everything is set to go. Let's talk about the silhouette. The silhouette is really boring. Uh, let's test it out. All right. Select inverse. You want to test out your silhouette, simply do this. Okay. All right. What 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 is the it's hard to tell what he is. So make the changes here on the silhouette. Um, I would make larger shoulders. I would make a much larger shoulder, kind of like he's always in his armor, or he's in the armor he lost his son in, so he promises that when he wears that armor, it will always remind him to avenge his son or some shit. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just getting really sad. And um, uh, so there's that scary shape. I want to use large, bold, scary shapes. Again, think Darius. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm just trying to make them symmetrical. And then I also want to make it so that, you know, this this cloth that he's wearing really acts like cloth. Yeah, it's big and burly, uh, but it, uh, it it moves around, not in a girly, windy way, sorry, uh, but uh, just like in a, in, a, in a billowy way, like, you know, the billow of something yet to come in cinema. <clears throat> so I'm going to add those in. 
All right, so I like the horns on the side. His arms are nice and hidden. I would like to see something up here, maybe like the crown uh, or something like that. Um, something to, to hit, just touch the top a little bit. Maybe he's wearing some furs and he's got like the ox fur. Maybe he's known as the ox king. I don't know, you know, whatever. But something just to help out that silhouette, make him look even more scary. So his head wouldn't be here. It would still be back where we found it. So I take that back over here. <clears throat> Try to uh, remove that background color. So his silhouette was lacking, definitely. I'd love to see what you can do with more attached to his silhouette. His hair seems a little long for a warrior. He seems more like a priest or leader of priests with that hair. I definitely keep the beard, but that long hair, I just see a bunch of losers hanging onto his back by holding his hair. It doesn't seem very, um, uh, you know, like a very helpful thing in, in, in war to have that long hair. But then again, they did pull that off with this guy's dreads. <clears throat> so it's really your choice. If you are strong enough to come close to this guy and pull his hair, he's likely going to whack your face with an axe and just cut half your face off. So uh, it's your choice. But it seems a little bit like his hair looks scary, right? Like dreadlocks are scary as fuck. Uh, but his hair looks so pretty and beautiful. Again, it's, it's really your choice how you want it. Is he the kind of king that hides in a castle or is he the kind that, that you know, throws a hammer around in the middle of battle. I feel like he's the kind that throws a hammer around in the middle of battle. He's angry. He has a lot of uh, stuff to, to, to do. He's got a lot of justice to, to create and do. <laughs> so I'm gonna just copy that, those two bits at the side, make the silhouette more interesting, less like a block and more like a, uh, let me get my brush, more like a real uh, that you feel you feel the fear factor um, in the silhouette level. Just from seeing him, imagine like a battle scene, and everybody's running around, and everybody's angry, and everybody's just killing each other and chopping each other up. And you see this silhouette come straight at you with the horns and the and the and the shoulder shoulder blade shoulder pad thingies, and you're just scared to sh to death. You just shit yourself. You just shit your manly Viking self, and you're not ashamed. <clears throat> All right. So I'm just gonna grab some of that gold on the rim. Very nice touch. Very noble looking. Very royal looking, but not too girly. I like that. Okay. And then the shoulder pads. I would do something more really metallic. Something that attaches itself to his armor or his cloak. Something metallic, something gray, but I'm just going to use black for now. And then just duplicate it on the other side. And get rid of that. It's going to look a little bit like Warcraft, but he's big enough, he can pull it off. <clears throat> and turn that off. And I would add the fur on after everything. I would just throw that fur. Probably like some sort of uh, ox fur or wolf fur or something. Something more natural. Seems like they live in a winter environment, so something like that. Maybe just starting like something Udyr like. Sorry, I play a lot of League of Legends. <laughs> um, so he looks more, he still looks like a king. He looks like a decorated motherfucker, but he's, he's decorated for war. He looks like an angry guy. As for what he's doing here, it feels like he's a little timid. Before, that's why it felt like he was so timid, um, so afraid, kind of not leaving his house for fear of losing another son kind of deal. Um, just gonna get rid of that extra hair. Uh, I feel like you should just hide his hand entirely. Just go get rid of it and um, uh, open up the cloak just a little and show where you know he's holding the sword, where his sword is at his side, holding the, the massive hammer that he kills people with. Um, anything that indicates the you know the kind of weapon that he uses. Because in a character design, someone hired you to do this. In a character design, you probably are responsible for. <clears throat> designing the weapon as well, design, or relating to the weapon. I'm, usually they have a weapons specialist, but... Alright, I'm going to make them a little smaller. Actually, I like the way they kind of rotate inward. Okay. 
and some cool accents so maybe like a ribbon uh, maybe it's like a morning ribbon whoever's morning has that kind of ribbon on them all the time or something I love the way you put the axe under his neckline uh, the ox the ox horns sorry um, I love the way you did that I really adore that <clears throat> But uh, now it's starting to look a little more daunting. His, his, his silhouette is a little bit more scary. It's scaring me as a human being. Like right now I'm scared. If I saw this guy in battle and I really want to, I don't want to die and I go, want to go back to my wife and children. And I look at this guy, I know I'm not going back to my wife and children. Because I dared to be part of the group against him that killed his son. <clears throat> his only living heir. Come on. Was he a king? I think he was. I forget. Maybe like ears here, maybe like a snout, or maybe a pig, a hog, you know, anything. Anything to make him look scary and uglier, and, um... Because we can't do it all in the face. We can't just make him an actual Nazgul. No, we can't make him a skeleton. <clears throat> we have to We have to do, leave some, some of the rest of the scariness in the, uh... In the costume and what he's doing. He still looks very royal. He has all of that stuff going on. I would get rid of the gold plate on the... It seems like it's gold plated. I would probably just keep that normal ivory color. I don't know if it's ivory on oxen, but... I feel like this natural color would be really nice. Break. Everything seems to be gold or purple. And then when we highlight it, we just get rid of that saturation. <clears throat> okay, so there's a lot of stuff that links you, always connects you back towards your narrative. The narrative is really, really, really important. What's everybody saying? Um, do I have a moderator right now? Is anybody a moderator? <clears throat> is Vince around? Because I think we need a moderator. Um... Uh, who do I trust that I can make a moderator? Because you guys are, there's some weird spammers right here. <clears throat> uh, someone volunteer. I just want you to ban anyone who talks random shit or promotes their t-shirt design or some shit. Um, just give me a second, YouTube. Sorry about this. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the ox thing. And I'm just going to throw some more of that fur down here. And that would cast a shadow on the rest of his... Um, uh, I think I'm going to make... Uh, I'm going to make you, Marco. Um set user as moderator. Uh, Marco, just ban anyone who, who's like, you know, spamming and saying really inappropriate stuff, okay? Uh, don't ban people who just stay on to off topic, just tell them to get back on topic, but ban any spammers, any people who talk nasty shit. Yeah, just get rid of them. Alright, so this color right here, the shadow you already threw in, I'm just gonna throw that in, sharpen that, and that'll be the shadow of this fur piece. I'm going to put it on darken and just darken it just a little more. Okay. And that'll kind of just serve as the as the shadow. Thank you, Marco. Sorry if it's too much responsibility. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility. <clears throat> Couldn't wait to use that somewhere in context. Okay, so that goes down. Um, probably uh, some more scary looking asymmetries, probably some, some kind of war sash that sits on the side, some kind of thing like that. I'm not sure what, whatever. Uh, maybe horns on the side, maybe that's just, you know, their horn culture, they really believe in that, you know, uh, you know they drink out of emptied out or hollowed out horns and stuff like that. One of them is broken. <clears throat> uh, maybe one of these doohickeys is broken on one side. Um, his beard, it should like show age. I would not make his beard look like he's 32. I would make his beard look like he's hitting his 40s. Just like really, really old. People can't wait till he's dead. 
People don't really believe in his cause anymore because he's a crazy king who gets them in wars they can't get out of. And now he's just really raging. Now he's just on the verge. Now he's really, yeah, he's really starting to feel like a, a scary character that they can interact with. Kind of like a, I don't know, some kind of game character now. <clears throat> All of these choices could, could possibly, you know, they're not, they might not match your taste, match your design taste, but think around those lines. Try to pull from the storyline that you have. Before he looked very timid, very scared, uh, very afraid, not really brooding or angry at the world and not refusing to end a war that's killing his people and eating up their resources. <clears throat> um, but uh, but some kind of guy that is like afraid, a priest that no one wants to speak to. Um, I'm seeing him more as that one guy from Game of Thrones that she locked in the... Um, you know the you know the dark skinned dude from when she went to that first city after they were <clears throat> abandoned in, into the in the desert and they stole her dragons and she's like where are my dragons you know those you know the guy that supposedly had a vault full of gold that's who he reminds me of you know just like a brooding you know like someone you can't trust uh, not brooding but like a, annoying but this guy looks like he's brooding he's ready to fight the wind is billowing through his costume and um, he looks like he's a man of war. Always add bulky items, bulky props on bulky characters. Write that back to me. <clears throat> Always add bulky props on bulky characters. Also, the light background does wonders for your values. Please don't use a dark background ever for character design sheets. It's just not a good idea. So this kind of bulky sash or whatever could be used. <clears throat> Careful of the purple wash. She just had purple everywhere. You had like a purple thing going on, even with the background, <clears throat> very purple. So I would get rid of the purple everywhere. I mean, the purple of the background seems okay. But I would just get rid of it entirely. <clears throat> I'm gonna cancel that, but I am gonna. I'm so sorry, I'm losing my voice. But I am gonna get rid of the purple and the and the beard. I'm just gonna make it colorless, kind of like grayscale. You'd be surprised how well grayscale reads beside a bunch of other colors. It can be very useful. Only have color where it's needed, especially on a male character that's supposed to look like Death himself. It's not supposed to be very friendly looking. I'm gonna cast a shadow off of these. <clears throat> Always add bulky Props on bulky characters, exactly. Don't add a fancy little, you know, neck. It's something. I don't know, like a sash, like a really sparkly looking sash. Unless you want him to look like the creepiest little little finger you've ever seen. <clears throat> then you give him those those little details. Alright, so these are my suggestions. Um, whether you like them or not, I think you should still think about working from the narrative and pulling from. Always consider the portrait. Make sure that it reads from a distance. Uh, make sure there's enough contrast for us to read it. Make sure the way you're designing the character is pulling from the narrative. If he's angry, his eyebrows should be angry all the time. If he's just lost his son, if he's forever in mourning. Um, all of that stuff applies to with the choices you make with the portrait. And uh, let me show you one thing that you could do. So this is no this is no brooding man, it's a female, but sh let me show you how much evil is in this kind of, um, let me turn down the ambience, all this. This is Portrait Studio, I don't know if you, any of you have heard of it, but it's a program my team and I designed and put together, um, and it's basically supposed to provide you with a referencing for all kinds of light source types, so you have control over the light source, control over the model, and control over the camera. You can change the models, head tilt, body features, all kinds of stuff. We are coming with massive updates soon before the end of the summer, but I'll talk about that near the end. <clears throat> but let me show you what this kind of light source does. It looks evil. It looks scary. How about that coupled with the light source that comes from beneath? It looks like a woman or a witch in front of her cauldron, right? So you could work from this. You could make light sources not just come from the top, and be really, really bright, and you just have that one a light source at the very tip of the nose. Um, you don't have to do it like that. You can be a little bit more tricky with it, or you can have that very skeletal cast shadow happening. 
um, which is also really, really great. It's a really great trick. Just something like that. You can still have him face the camera. Something like that. Also makes someone feel like they're in the deep darkness of mourning and they're refusing to get out of it. And they're making all kinds of misguided choices on the battlefield that lead to the death of many of their people. Enough that the men themselves are losing loyalty and they're, and they're seeing their king as having gone mad. Uh, this is a great light source for that. I know, a little dramatic, but I love I love creating a studio of light sources. As you can see, put together a portrait studio just for that. There's so much you can do, and the light source, a cast shadow, is also a prop. Write that back to me. A cast shadow is a prop, which means that it also has the power to dress up your character and push the narrative. <clears throat> All right, so this is a really, really great opportunity. If you guys want to buy Portrait Studio, just go to my website, sprag.com. It's available there um, if you want to buy it with credit card or uh, selfie on PayPal. That's also an option that's been made recently. So in conclusion, I think that you should break up the, cat, the, the silhouette first and work on the portrait second. Uh, those are the two main um, diagnoses, I guess, that I can give you. And then work on the details from that, whatever you decide to dress them up with. Okay, so this character here, I wanted to talk about her because she's kind of missing a light. She's against a lot of light, which could mean she's a type of light. She's a kind of like a, a goddess, like, and it's very tribal. She is wearing very tribal clothes, so it's like a jungle dweller or nomad or something. And uh, she's, she's kind of like a princess kind of nomad girl. I'm not sure, but essentially you're throwing the light behind her. It could just be a simple study, and I'm making something big out of it, but... Um, what we need to do is, first of all, there's almost no real form. A lot of values are just popping up out of nowhere, blending together. No real edges cast um, to separate these values from each other. So this arm, this whole shoulder unit is just sitting there. And I would love to see some highlights on it, some, some kind of work done on the shoulder, since it is one of the closest things to us. And then we throw that last highlight that makes the shoulder feel a little bit more realistic. Okay. And this edge right here is really the one of the most important things, probably the most important thing about rendering, is getting edges. So what I mean by go on and work on some edges, I don't mean get a small detail brush and start, like when I say detail, I don't mean to get a small brush and just start detailing. I mean get rid of lines and replace them with edges. And anywhere that's supposed to be unblended or some kind of indentation or angle or stacking also needs to be unblended. This is the way we get detail to happen. Um, so if we do that everywhere here, even this simple light under the eyes, if we just make that a little bit more sharp, we also push the detail and push the rendering. So that's what I mean, making sure that you're not blending where you don't have to. Right here under the brow line, all the way up. All right, what's happening? No? no? All right. <clears throat> it's kind of working like a, an outline for the eyebrows without us ever having to shrink our brush. Carry that all the way through. And we're detailing and bringing in detail. So get rid of those fuzzy edges is really what your next step would be. And uh, start making changes and, and ma major surface edges. Separate surface edges from each other by not blending them together. Make sure you're carrying highlights all the way across where they happen. To block in some of the major highlights. Um, this really wouldn't be here. The, the movement is forward, so it would be kind of behind her. You want to create a feeling of motion. If you throw a random piece here, it doesn't really feel like it's motion anymore. I feel like it's billowing, but nothing else seems to be billowing. Um, other than that, really, that's the only next step. I can't really look that far in the future for the progress of this specific piece, but uh, start making some edges. Some massive areas that require an edge are the side of the nostril leading into the cast shadow here. All of this can be addressed and taken on in a nice, safe environment, sandbox environment um, uh, of, the, of the 14 day challenge. You guys can draw as many faces as you want, perfect your entire portraiture, um, skill range and then come back to full illustrations and see what you can pull off and work on bodies and work on gesture drawings. That's pretty much the curriculum I follow. But I love here what you're doing with the stacking. This is beautiful. 
Good job preserving that stacking, really hiding one eye behind the nose. That's that's wonderful. That's like the best, my favorite thing about this entire painting. Other than the motion, you know, that, that real motion that you feel is that right here, this edge that you've created, where you stacked one object behind the next. A little more contrast wouldn't hurt. And making sure that this eye is strictly forbidden from peering over or sitting over the edge of the face. So we need, it needs to be separated, shrunken, pushed over, and separated from the side of the face. Just like that. So it seems a little bit more realistic. It, it, you kind of can get away with that with um, anime, but you can't really get away with it with realism. Um, still very tricky. These kinds of choices have to be made all zoomed out. One more. Alright, where was it before? Yeah. Okay. So less sitting over all of the edges. So the edge of the face, less sitting on top of the edges of the cheek and more confined to the front view of the face. All right. Um, a little more shadow here. Oops. And really, that's all I would suggest for this. Um, go on to the next study and see how far you can push your, your edges. And make sure you're planning out proportions. And then this piece here. Um, so, first of all, zoomed out right off the bat, the head's too big. So, I'm going to shrink the head, but also the proportions of the face aren't sitting in the head properly. They don't feel like they're actually sitting on the head. They're kind of tilted outside of the... Oops. of the proportions. So I'm shrinking that, looking at the navigator, the head was very big before very very big. If she's a general, I think I read the story for this as she's her being a general, she would have a much bigger body. The bigger the body, the more athletic she will seem. All right. And then now, now this is the tricky bit. I'm going to have to decide what to do. Um so tilt the head but erase what's in it. Because, actually I'd have to tilt it back normally, because the head was kind of like, as you can see, the head, the chin was on these kind of tilted, but the head was, they weren't on the same horizontal. It felt like the head wasn't sitting on the shoulders right, and the face was, but everything else wasn't matching. This tiny little thing, it's just, I'm just really picky. So I'm going to show you what all that looked like in the before and after, and then we'll talk about the lighting. So if you do have trouble blocking in major shadows, which is the major issue with the lighting here, you're not blocking in as much as you should be. If I feel like you threw these cast shadows after you finished rendering the face, I do encourage you to block them in early on. But the problem with that is that we're not thinking of the face as a geometric landscape. So we're not thinking of the Asaro head, low poly kind of kind of head. And I'll show you what I mean on Portrait Studio in a second. So flatten the image. So her face is just the right amount of masculine. It's really pretty, very angry looking. I love how brutal she looks before, after. So before. The head was very large, not matching the body type, very childlike proportions. When you want to create uh, proportions like that, um, that's pretty much the proportions you use for, for a baby, for, for a, an adolescent, prepubescent pre kind of body. But when she's fully grown, full army general, wearing massive armor, she is not going to be... Um, uh, have it ha she's not going to have this kind of size to her body. Her body should be much, much bigger than her head. <clears throat> um, Alright, 
so before, after. And you see what I meant how the head was kind of tilted outside of the proportions, like the this is going this way and the head is going this. They were kind of, they were kind of just uh, interjecting at a, at, a, at a slight or obtuse perpendicular angle. All right. Um, does the armor not look off to you? It, it looks off to me only because there's no major specular uh, highlight happening. So I'm going to get dodge tool on highlights and I'm going to build up the lightest points and I'm going to try to do it like a frequency zigzag just across the major areas that, that respond to the light source and I'm going to shade radially building up the highest highlight. That's the only reason why the armor looked off. Armor can only be armor if it's if it's nice and, and built out of heavy material that can't, can't be pierced by other steel. Steel can't be pierced with the steel. I mean it can but also can't. Um, so you kind of have to have a really strong resilient steel like armor and it's usually very shiny. So I'm just throwing that shine in. I do recommend that you that you have some sweat on her face, some sort of, you know, I just got out of a battle and I'm, I just killed 17 guys and I, they're not going to see their children again kind of face. <clears throat> so uh, for the lighting, uh, let's try to duplicate this exact kind of lighting in the portrait studio. Um, so coming in from the side, long shadow. Okay. Oh, i got to turn this brightness all the way down, Mrs. Skeleton. And... Let's try to make the cast shadow work the same way. All right. So a little brighter. And then I'm going to throw a secondary light source just across the sides over here. Nothing too big. Just so that we can counter that and push it to the sides. We're just countering these excess shadows. I'm going to bring that brightness down. Nothing too big. I just want to make sure we don't have that much shadow enveloping over. Raise that brightness. Let me take a look and see what happens in this kind of brightness. This is exactly what she's in currently. And we see that it really encompasses the, the entire eye socket area, that entire recessed area. Recessed, if you look at it in the skeletal level, look at a skull. You know, the shadows, the holes really start over here and end here. So that's what we're tracking down. We're trying to find where that happens. The side light, the side of the light. So, I mean, the side of the face, the light can do a little something like that if the light's coming from the side. So let me try to do it with this thing. Turn that off. Raise that brightness all the way up. So all these controls are going to be changed soon, mm, boo. but they're going to be replaced with awesome controls and much better higher resolution lighting, God willing, if we can find a good replacement. But we are using Unity to develop this, so it's a tug of war with Unity. But this is something that I feel like can, because I feel like the light is right behind her, because of the way you've matched it, see this, right along the cheekbone, this is exactly what you did, so this creates kind of a shadow on the side of the nose, and that's again what I mean by blocking in. All these areas are great indicators for where some uh, shine might happen, so a person who has a wet skin has a very high shine to them, a little bit reflective as well, so this is also a great place to build some uh, referencing, so I recommend adding shine in all these areas where if she were sweating, these areas would be the first areas to be illuminated. Save this screenshot. I'm just going to work with it as I paint over yours. Class is a little long today. I'm sorry. But um, I do want to I wanna make this painting thorough, paint over thorough. So I'm going to grab the blocking in brush that I used to block in early stages of the painting. I'm going to go to darken layer. And I'm just going to block that in. I'm going to remember exactly what I saw. This is really necessary. I'm going to try to push that shadow all the way around the eyes. Get that eraser as well. And try to get that exact shine level. I might have exaggerated the shine, but that's fine because I can always mattify it just a little bit. She's, she seems a little mattified for someone who just fought uh, a battle, you know? She seems like she's got some really nice high definition 
uh, foundation powder on that doesn't allow her to get all shiny for the camera. No, I want her to look like she has no time for high definition powder. <laughs> so the nose casts its shape along the side of the cheeks. And this feels like more like sunlight, right? It feels like there's more sunlight really happening. Careful with uh, making it too shiny, the skin tone on Portrait Studio, making it too shiny. It will read as, you know, you will lose some of the contrast uh, and the visibility of the cast shadows. That's the point of Portrait Studio. It's supposed to be, you know, a place to go. The model isn't of any specific race. And if you do have adjustments you want to make on the model, it's perfectly possible. And it's just the it's just the fast way to get the reference you need without having to look on Google for hours. Really, that was just my that was the premise. It was a necessity. I was tired of looking for stuff on Google to make the light sources more interesting in my paintings. All right, so the cast shadows of the hair also move this way. Um, this actually would move a little more. So I'm just mapping and I'm blocking in. This is really important to do this. It's really important to do this. And everything seems to be pointing the exact direction you made it point in. I made her just a little too shiny, but that's fine. Everything is pointing in the same direction. Okay. Sorry, guys, I'm not looking at your comments. <clears throat> All right, so the next step, I'm just going to make her skin a little shiny. How do I do that? So before, after. Do you see how it was kind of not really shown off where the light source was hitting her face. I mean, look how sharp this cast shadow is. Only the sun can do this, really. Unless a massive floodlight is in your in your, in your your room or something or in the studio. But she's outside. She just fought a battle. Or she just saw her enemy that she's been looking for in the battlefield and she hasn't seen him yet. Random reference. Um, so now I'm just going to make a new layer, put it on color dodge. And I'm just going to use a white. It's not really color dodge, but it's like using dodge tool but a little more safe and I'm just gonna create that shine in all those areas that Portrait Studio indicated would catch the light so just along here especially here you threw a shadow where there should have been a light on the side of the nose building up just on the edge of that nose going all the way down okay and then going down into the upper area of the lips making her face look a little more dewy really is the point here side of her mouth going up and then that jowl she seems to be like she seems like she was always frowning like that one cute adorable thing from game of thrones lady liana or something the young girl with that adorable writing that she wrote back to <laughs> God, that was my favorite episode this season um, but anyways, what am I doing? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm creating that, that kind of that jowl shadow. And cast shadows, make sure, I mean, the highlights, make sure they, they're a little bit more sharp than everything else. They're not necessarily, um, highlights on the face. They're, they're specular lights. They're that really shiny bit. I'm going to throw a little bit more light on the inside of her eye. You have a line here, bad, 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 bad. You have a line on the eye. That just, just no, <laughs> get rid of that. That's a waterline area. It should not be lit. I mean, darkened. It should be lit. Okay, her head still seems a bit big to me. Like considering all her armor, she just seems like she's more of an archer in the distance than she is someone on the battlefield. If a girl was on the battlefield and she had a body of a girl, she got there somehow. She was blessed with some crazy genes early on that she was big enough that men didn't stand in the way of her. Just like the Brienne character. Uh, sorry for my constant Game of Thrones references, but they do explore all kinds of different characters. It's always a, an artist's best friend really watching that show because it shows you a lot of the power behind character design, how important the narrative is and how they tie together. Some people just watch it to have fun. Dirty casuals. <clears throat> so I'm going to shrink the head just a little bit more. So she feels like a brute. She feels like a strong woman, care capable of carrying a long sword with one hand. Typically that's the Olympic standard for fighting in the battlefield. You also have to have stamina. You have to have strength to keep up running with all that armor. <clears throat> so it's a tricky business. 
still really, really large, her head, and I had to shrink that. So I'm just going to uh, paint away these areas, make this all feel a little seamless. I would keep her neck pretty thick. Um, again, she probably works out carrying that <clears throat> massive sword. I don't know if any of you have carried like a sledgehammer or something, but you do that enough, you, you chop wood enough, you will get the best trapezius and lateral muscles you've ever seen. They will just pop, okay? And that pop sound I made, that, they will just pop. <clears throat> I've also been a little bit obsessed with like, you know, um, working out for the last, I don't know how long, years. Um, and I've, I've kind of just been noticing where your body gets larger versus where it gets, uh, you know, where it gets larger and leaner or versus where it stays the same. Just depends on the task. So that really does apply to character design. If she's been carrying around a sword, it's very, very, it shows on the body where she's increased in size, where she got swole. So it is going to look really different with the one we had before. Massive head, massive head. Uh, that I prefer you um, completely get rid of as soon as possible um, in your PSD. Once you get rid of that, you'll be able to get started on the basics like blocking in. Don't do too much work early on. Her head really needed to be this small uh, for it to make sense that she's a brute for it, to, for it to make sense. So let's take a look at some of these. Female boxer. Uh, female UFC man, not boxer. <clears throat> All right. I met Ronda Rousey's fucking face. Angry Jigglypuff. Um, over here. This is a pretty good one. Actually, it's from the sides. So you can't really tell. Right over here is a pretty good one. And uh, the head is pretty small. Like, remove the hair. Her hair looks massive. But the head's pretty small compared to the width of her torso. Same as what we have here. The torso and the head size. They have to be proportionate. And when you shrink it, you will not shrink it enough the first time. That's a given. You will not, damn it, where are the, you will not shrink it right the first time. It'll always be not small enough. I'm looking at the sides of the torso right here, the lateral and the trapezius muscles. That's what I'm looking at. They're pretty big. I mean, the hair is always covering it. God. But uh, they're pretty big usually. For, for UFC fighters, it's different. They build um, a lot of core strength. This is a pretty good one as well. Pretty small head from side to side and then comparing the torso. Kind of like two heads width in this angle. If it was head on, it would seem, seem even wider. Um, this is another, what the, this is another pretty good one. Head width from side to side and then comparing that to the torso. I feel like I can wrap two around. <clears throat> and that's it. All right. So before I definitely the head size, the head width was the what's the was the width of the torso. That's not good. It should be two, or or less than two if she's really big, if she carries a long sword. All right. <clears throat> I don't know where Allie is. Uh, Allie's off duty. <laughs> Allie's off duty right now. Big heads are unrealistic. Yeah, of course they are. I mean, th they are used in character design and anime a lot. Uh, you have to use them and 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 the proportions for a younger person, but uh, they they yeah you can't have them be that big on a character that is a grown woman a grown general not just a general, uh, you know a hack and slash, war and battlefield, female Draven, I mean female not female Draven yeah female Draven but female Darius. <clears throat> Thank you Rachel. Uh, I'm happy that my critique helped you. Esterback, what drawing exercises do you recommend for a not total beginner, uh, but somebody definitely not ready to render something fully? Angela, I recommend form studies. I will always recommend form studies. They'll get you in the habit of using cast shadows. They'll get you in the habit of, of using edges, making sure that you can edge work. Um, they get you in the habit of all of that without really having to worry about creative force and giving anything a label. So instead of painting a picture of a vase, Paint a cylinder. Perfect your cylinders and different kinds of light sources. And Portrait Studio has form studies for you if you don't know how to make them up. Um, that was weird, what just happened. But, um, where are they? I forget where they are. Shapes, sorry, there you go. And you can just have all kinds of light sources. Add the shine. They have all kinds of crevices. Just take a look at how the shadow is more intricate when we're looking straight on it, but from the side, it's just a simple chip. 
These are the kinds of things you don't really learn if you're constantly painting a face. I'm changing the light source color as well. Really, really important. I mean the light source intensity, sorry. You can learn all about shadows and how they how they affect a piece. Raise the ambience all the way up if you don't like having those severe shadows. So this is a form study. This is something I recommend all the time. I'm going to bring the reflectivity and the shininess down just a little bit. Just take a look at how those cast shadows happen. Oh, mama, look at that. That's like, you know those people that look at magazines and look at dirty stuff? <laughs> I, I look at mag like if there was a magazine just for cast shadows, I just have a collection of them. <laughs> um, let's take a look at another shape. Let's take a look at what the fuck did I just say. All right, so these are great exercises. I always recommend these form studies. They get you learning about cast shadows, about volume, about value changes, about reflectivity. Look at this reflectivity. When it comes close to the base of the, you know, under here, there's like a plate. When it comes close to the ground, it reflects the ground a little bit. Closer it gets to the light source. I have lots of videos, so this area will always be dark because the light source is coming in from the side, as the arrow indicates. So if you guys are interested in purchasing it, you just have to go to isterback.com and go to the store. A lot of updates are coming up. So this is what's coming up. Massive, massive UI update. It'll be a lot more easy to save your slots. So you can save all kinds of slots. It'll be a lot more easy for you to save everything. Sorry about that. Um, there will be uh, uh, models, changes for the male and female model. Um, and uh, a lot of control changes for the light source. God, it just list just goes on and on. Uh, painting on the screen, so drawing indications, really mostly so I can teach with it, but painting on the screen. Um, color, a color picker that's a lot more, um, I guess, cohesive is the word. So a lot of stuff is going to come up that's going to change this. This is still in, it's still in development, but it's it's a usable development, and it's and it's uh, we're just going to constantly be building up on it. We're just it's just it's just going to get better uh, from here on out. Uh, there's a lot of controls, too much to go through in the time that I have. <clears throat> um, so, Isabek, do you recommend using lasso tool to make clean straight edges or are you against that? Angela, I am absolutely for that. The way I do form studies is I get the lasso tool. If you've ever seen my pro process videos, I get the lasso tool and I just start drawing in my form study. Um, I freestyle my shapes. You can also freestyle your shapes. You don't have to use a reference. I recommend for those who have never done this before to use a reference. Um, but yeah, this is what I do. I need those sharp edges. Sometimes when I want to clean up an edge, I will just lasso it out. I'll make sure that this lasso is promoting that sharp edge that I need. I need this. Look at that beauty. I need that sharp edge. I need it, right? My brush isn't going to pull it off. Lasso is the only thing that's going to pull it off. Sometimes for detail, you really need sharp edges. Okay, any other questions? To learn anatomy, you need to go through a full drawing course, or can you just look at references of people and draw them? Uh, Adaze Njoku, um, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the name. Uh, to learn anatomy, you don't need to join any kind of anatomy class or atelier, or you don't need to hire a personal model and have a love affair. Uh, you just need to go to youtube.com and or any other video streaming website and look at the anatomy that you want to learn. So do you want to learn... Um, uh, like I don't know, uh, holding a sword. That's always the one I use. Holding, holding the sword. Uh, so look at this, mute it, and just take a look at this guy, how he demonstrates holding a sword. Uh, let's see where he might... Alright, so you're absolutely useless. <clears throat> Alright, so just watch the gestures as they happen. Usually I prefer someone shirtless, not just because I'm a perv and I like looking at men shirtless, <laughs> um, but because you need to see how those muscles react. I think the biggest thing about anatomy is knowing which muscles to use um, for the current gesture. So he's holding a sword in a bicep curl position, so his biceps would be bulging out. So you draw those to be a little bit more voluminous than any other area. If he's lunging, then his thigh area, his entire quadricep area would get very, very bulgy. Um, look at all kinds of videos. The best way to observe and, and uh, experience anatomy is live. Write that back to me, everybody. See how his muscles stick out? It's a, it's a bicep curl. This sword is heavy. It's no joke. All right, let's see if he does some actual movements instead of just dicking around. <clears throat> Come on, dude. 
Okay, so you cut through a bunch of paper. Damn, that must have cut bone like butter, y'all. Scary medieval crap. Um, but yeah, I, I can't find a good reference. But find someone swinging the sword, holding the sword. Maybe this guy here. All right. Okay. Come on, fella. Okay. Too much talking. <laughs> I'm complaining about talking. All right. So he's gonna swing it. That, that, you can create frames for that for my students for private tutoring. I assign them frames. I tell them, give me frames in the animation. This is the best way to learn anatomy. Just download this video and repeat it over and over again. And look at how his muscles contract. It's very fast, but that's where it happens. Look at what happens to the gesture, how open that gesture is. That's, I think that's one of the biggest, best tips I can give anyone about learning anatomy. You learn proportion with the mileage, you learn proper head sizes and arm length with the mileage, uh, but looking at the motion in front of you, that is the best way to experience anatomy. The best way to experience anatomy is live. <clears throat> Would topless guy with swords do the trick? Yes. <laughs> they're not heavy, but there are lots of motion in those peeps. Um, yeah, that costume. <laughs> Uh, so thanks everyone for coming. If you guys want to stick around and uh, watch me stream, I'll be streaming in like an hour or so, not for too long, uh, not long, not not too soon is the wait. Uh, so go to istarac.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Every video that I post, everything that I do online is notified to you through Twitter. So when I stream, I usually try to remember to tweet it. Um, if I don't, you, if you subscribe on YouTube, it'll also notify you that I'm streaming. So please subscribe on YouTube if you want to stay connected. Google Plus is where I picked all of these uh, pieces to critique. These were all posted here in the community. Um, this, If you want to do a 14-day challenge, which is, a, which is 14 days of portraiture drawing in grayscale without any hair or accessories until you perfect it, needing a critique between each day, all of that can be made here. People will give you a critique. This community is great. It's amazing. It's reached 1,500 people. I'm not sure how, <laughs> um, but there's always someone there to give you some thoughts about your work. And um, please don't just post stuff uh, without, I mean, this person did, but please don't post stuff without describing what the issue is. This is not your gallery. It never will be a gallery just for your work, for your daily, for, for your daily doohickeys. This is for studies. Post your studies. This is for serious use where you need a community to give you their thoughts and you are ready for critique. If you are squeamish and you can't handle critiques, don't go here. But if you can and you want to learn, you want to get better at faster rate, critiques are the best way to go. And uh, joining a community is the best thing. Um, I'd love to see what uh, Marco wrote. <clears throat> I'll read it after. Um, what else? Facebook, if you want your paint over sent back to you, just message me on Facebook. I'll give you everything back to you. Um, I'll give everything back to you in full res, as, as in the res that I got it in. And that's it. If you want community, if more connection, a lot of Q&A is in the community tab on my website. The villain is no longer running, but I'm keeping it open for people who want to just try out the villain design. A lot of people are still posting it. And uh, private tutoring slots are currently closed, completely booked for the summer. I won't be able to book anyone else. But if you guys are interested in private tutoring, there's always a waiting list. The prices are a tiny bit over uh, the usual pr uh, costs of... Um, I'm, I'm, I guess they're fair, but they're pretty expensive. Uh, so only if you know if you know you can afford it, and it isn't free. If, I wish I could offer it to you guys for free, but we all need to eat, and it is my main job. So um, yeah, they're closed for now, but I will, I will, I promise, I will open them up, and I will notify you guys when private tutoring slots are available again. Uh, private tutoring is pretty much done for those who are curious over Google Hangouts or Skype. I paint over your work, very similar to this to the sessions here. Um, but specifically to you and your issues that lasts an hour long. They're very fun. We really get to know each other. I've had students that are with me for almost two years now. I just, I love them. Every one of them has their own art journey. They've improved so much. I can't wait to run a showcase video for them. And that's it. Thanks everyone for coming, you guys. <clears throat> Is another theme challenge in the works? Uh, yes, it is a character design theme challenge, but um, 
I, I don't have time. I'm so sorry. I'm completely booked for the summer, so I've, I've really been trying to make time, uh, but I can't seem to find it. I just saw a, f a flaw here. I do recommend that you do this because this cast shadow doesn't just sit there. Sorry, I just saw it now. <laughs> um, the cast shadow moves up along the... I should probably use a soft brush. Moves up along... Just like that. Anyways, I'm done. Thanks everyone for coming. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.